Hi everyone, so we're on to, we're doing a summary of this coming week's parasha, which is Parashat Ki Tavo, and uh, sorry about all the different camera angles, but uh, I've got a big bright light, a bright window behind me there, and this is bright and it makes the room dark, and it's all good, it's all good. So, hang on a sec, I'll just move my face up, so while I look, there I am. Alright. Now, Parashat Kitavo. Moshe concluded the legal section of his discourse with an account of the ceremonies to be performed in the Promised Land, involving the Bikurim, the first fruits of the seven... Minim, the seven species. These were to be brought to the Kohen in the central sanctuary. The donor was then to recite a prayer of thanksgiving, recalling how Hashem had delivered his ancestors from Egypt and brought the new generation into a land flowing with milk and honey. The Ma'aser, tenth of the crop of each third year of the Shemitah cycle, was to be given to the poor. After this, the donor was to offer a prayer in which he declared that he had obeyed the commandment to set aside Ma'aser for the Levi, orphan and widow. Moshe and the elders instructed the people to observe several solemn ceremonies once they had crossed the Jordan River. Firstly, they were to erect, la la to erect large stones on Mount Eval and clearly inscribe on them all the words of the law. Secondly, they were to build an altar of stones and sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings on it. The sacrificial meal which followed the latter was to be eaten in an atmosphere of rejoicing. Thirdly, the acceptance of the law was to be ratified by the twelve tribes in the following manner. Six tribes were to stand upon Mount Grizim representing the blessings, while the remaining six tribes were to stand upon Mount Eval signifying the curses. The Levian were to stand in the valley midway between the mountains and were to pronounce curses upon those who committed the following sins and blessings upon those who avoided them. A. Idolatry. B. Dishonoring one's parents. C. Removing a, name, a neighbor's boundary line. D. Misleading the blind. E. Acting unjustly towards the stranger, orphan and widow. F behaving in an immoral fashion, G, murdering someone in secret, H, taking a bribe, sorry, taking a bribe to give false testimony in a case involving capital punishment, I, failing to observe the commandments in general. All members of the 12 tribes were to respond to each curse and blessing with a refrain of Amen, which here says it means truth. Although the Gemara says Amen means El Melech Ne'eman, meaning in God we have faith. The people had frequently been warned of the consequences of disobeying Hashem's laws. Now that they were about to enter the Promised Land, Moshe felt it his duty to place even greater emphasis upon the results their future behavior would bring. If the Bnei Israel observed Hashem's commandments, they would receive numerous blessings. These would include prosperity from the fields and within their cities, abundant livestock, the subjugation of enemies and supremacy over other nations. The alternative would lead to disaster. Disease, famine and death would result. The land of the Israelites would be overrun by a cruel nation. The Jews would be scattered throughout the world and they would once again become slaves. God forbid. Moshe then began his third and final discourse to the people. He appealed to them to remember Hashem, their God, who watched over them in Egypt during their wanderings in the wilderness and who would continue to protect them in the future. Have a good week.